I'm in the heart of Silicon Valley on the roof of Supermicro. We've got so much to talk about, so much to look at AI and machines and that sort of thing. And Supermicro are the people that are actually build the machines. So we're gonna take a little peek behind the corner and see how that works. Should be a lot of fun, let's go. This is Supermicro's custom loop liquid cooling system. It's not really a custom loop, but it's a full rack cooling solution to cool 64 H100s in basically a standard rack configuration. This is their vertical distribution manifold. So basically each system connects directly in the front, but you can also quick disconnect here if you really want to. These are great because they have sensors in the top, visual indicator for operators, but also there's a sensor in there that the uh, cooling distribution unit, the CDU, can tell if you're low on fluid because the fluid doesn't reach the top of the vertical cooling stack, basically. The cooling in here is PG25, and the controller actually monitors for pressure and possible uh, you know, humidity so that you get possible condensation side effects. It monitors for leaks. It can shut all these systems down gracefully. It's full control. It has a hot, uh, a hot replacement pump system, so if a pump fails, you can actually hot replace a pump because the other pumps will keep it running. Same with the power supply, same with everything else. There's even visual indicators and sensors at the top of the fluid distribution, the vertical distribution for fluid, at the rear of the rack that will let you know if you're low on fluid. So they really have thought of everything. This is definitely not a first generation product. It's also really handy that it carries the heat directly outside instead of mixing it with the air. And then the data center has to deal with, you know, air conditioners and all that kind of stuff. Now nah, we'll just put a heat exchanger in the bottom of the rack, cool that way. And that's how Supermicro is really de dealing with their AI future that Jensen's talking about on stage. It's kind of nuts. The breakdown for one of our systems, there are eight of them in this rack. You've got two Intel Xeon nodes here, two CPUs, full memory loadout, full storage. And then you've got NVLink switches that connect to the rest of the system. So in this setup, all of your PCIe Gen 5 can go to those NVLink switches and then your eight H100s are all cross-connected with one another. The real secret for the next generation product is that you get basically an additive effect with the H100. When you have the NVLink crossbar, all of the VRAM is basically additive across the chassis. So if you need something that needs a terabyte of VRAM, you can run with a terabyte of VRAM in this config. And then of course, this is your CPU interface. And they're taking advantage of the CPU and PCIe resources here. Check out the IO on the rear of these. Look at all those QSFP modules. That is a ton of connectivity for this rack, which is getting ready to be installed somewhere. It's actually 2,500 pounds of equipment on this one rack. It's nuts. All of this for serviceability is quick connect and disconnect. So once you get your system configured, you just, or you need to do maintenance, you can just do quick connect and disconnect from your distribution bar here. You get GPUs in the top, eight of them, and you get CPUs and storage and memory in the bottom and all your connectivity. Behold, the 70 to 80 kilowatts of our sentient AI. This is what V'ger is going to look like. This is what HAL is going to look like. 64 H100s in 2,500 pounds of just raw metal. If a non-human intelligence had an entropy detector, there would be unusually low entropy at this point in space. Supermicro figures for the other racks that they've been building around a similar hardware configuration that this one rack has about as much compute as they usually build out in four racks with air cooling. And it's 70 kilowatts when you're using liquid cooling instead of air cooling. If you don't take into account the cost of cooling the liquid, talking about running a fan, if you don't have to run that many fans, you're saving a pretty significant amount of power. You might have noticed there's eight of these connectors at the back of the system. There's also eight systems in the rack, and there's also eight H100s. This is not a coincidence. Every node is directly connected to every other node. That minimizes latency and lets you basically build an eight by eight grid of just H100 madness. That is a lot of bandwidth from every node to every other node. Eight interfaces. Look at this. This is our cooling aisle data center future. All of this plumbing and piping is to bring cool water in. But cool is a little bit of a relative term here. It's 32 degrees C, ideally. So it's not exactly super cold, 
but that is plenty cold enough to remove all of the heat from all of the racks connected to this. And this is quite a setup. I mean, look at the size of this. This piping connects to the heat exchanger manifold in the bottom of the rack. So the fluid in this pipe never actually touches any of the heat sinks or anything like that inside the rack. And then the manifold distributes the cool PD25 throughout the rest of the rack. This is the other end of those cooling pipes that we saw downstairs. You know, this is going to go down and connect to the aisle. And we see that there's several of those that connect as it goes through the rest of the roof. This is managing the uh, cool water supply from the outside from the super micro cooling tower, which is actually a product you can buy now. It's in their catalog. A building roof typically does have a lot of stuff on it already for cooling, but the nice thing about this type of tower and rack cooling is that you don't need large air handlers. You don't need anything like that. This is for conditioned space. What you need for cooling entire aisles of liquid cooling is just a couple of eight inch iron pipes, not this. Now suppose you expand your data center and you need more cooling, what do you do? Really, you just need a couple more pipes. Carry the cooled liquid down to the racks. The rows and rows and rows and rows of liquid cooled racks. It sounds easier than it is, but it's a lot easier than these air handlers. And this, this is the end of the line. This is where the cooling goes to go be cooled in the cooling tower. I mean, it's basically all it is, but th this is all the roof infrastructure you need is just some iron piping, but it goes over the roof here, down the wall, and to the super micro cooling tower. And that's where things get interesting. So this is the cooling tower. And the cooling tower is actually a super micro product that you can buy, they just added to their catalog. So if you want the whole data center solution, a whole data center custom loop, uh, this is basically what we're talking about. It's an evaporative cooler. It's going to evaporate hot water, basically, and use that cooling properties of that to cool your whole, I mean, it's just, it's gonna cool your whole data center. Supermicro's evaporative cooling tower, an actual product in the actual catalog, stuff you could buy, five megawatts of cooling. It is actual tower cooling. I mean, what more can I say? Well, that's been a quick look at Supermicro's uh, campus. And if you already have a data center and you're already spending a lot of electricity on cooling, it might be worth taking a look at their all-in-one five megawatt tower cooling system because you could get back some savings in your electricity by just taking that heat directly outside. Huge thanks to Supermicro for bringing me out to show me some cool stuff. I've also got to take a look at an AI workstation because I want to run this at my desk. And if I want to run this at my desk, well, Supermicro wants to use some of their liquid cooling stuff that they're getting into for workstations. And really, I've got to take a closer look at that. So be on the lookout for that video in a little bit. Again, big thanks to Supermicro. And I saw some truly mind-blowing things at GTC. Be sure to check out my last video of GTC coverage as well because there's a virtual twin of Earth and Jensen is literally modeling the weather patterns on Earth and I saw robots and the Star Wars robots are real and I just, I can't even believe all this. It's, it's just madness. Our AI future really is here. Like this is the generation of hardware that we will probably see general artificial intelligence. That's how big a deal this is. I'm Wendell's Level 1 signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums.